What's up everyone? It's Jaden, also known as Project Elements here, back at it again with, yep, a new plush review. But this time, it's a very special one, because we're taking a look at these two fellas. Finally taking a look at SA1, Sonic, and Tails. Now, if you've been following me for a while, and you've watched some of my other videos, or you follow my social media accounts, you've definitely seen these guys. I have had these for actually longer than I've had uh, a very special plush that I've already made a video on. But, yeah, these guys are seriously awesome. And I am super excited right now to actually finally be taking a look at them on the channel, because Man, these guys, I, I don't think they're, like, there are Sonic plushes that might be better than these guys. But these are, like, just the coolest. Now, of course, there are Sonic plushes out there that I'm still hunting down that might be cooler than these guys. But these guys are pretty damn cool. And today, we're gonna get into just exactly why they're so good. Actually, that means we're going to be starting with the SA-1 Sonic plush. Now, before anything, I need you guys just to see how big these guys are. Because I don't even know if the Eggman video did it justice, just how big these SA-1 plushes are. So... It's pretty freaking big. <laughs> You know, these guys are seriously, they got some weight to them. Like, you never really understand just how massive these guys are until you have, like, three of them sitting in one shelf filling up basically the entire thing. Like, these things are ginormous. Okay, maybe not, like, super, super massive. If you're looking for a massive plush, the whole place worse ways to spend your money so yeah um this guy is pretty big but he's not the biggest out there and i think we should start with the face now mine is fairly used so there are some tattering and scratching of the eyes the previous owner actually painted over the eyes if you can see that on the camera to make them uh, white again, and while I might have appreciated him leaving the eyes intact, I actually think that looks pretty good. He did a pretty solid job bringing them back to like shining detail. And the rest of them, you can see a couple of scuffs on the eyes, but overall he's actually in pretty decent shape. He's better than I expected him to be in, and certainly good. <laughs> Certainly, um, I mean, I guess I should have expected him to be at a somewhat decent condition for the price I paid for him, but, you know, that's, uh, that's whatever. I'm not salty at all. I'm not salty at all that I also helped one of my friends get one of these for literally half the price I paid for mine. Not at all. Okay, I'm actually kidding on that part. Yeah, it, that... <laughs> I'll actually, uh, I'll link his Insta in the comments, because he's actually a pretty cool guy, and I recommend you check him out. His name is, uh, Goatware. But, yeah. Actually, um, it was, I was happy to help him get one of these, because this guy's so awesome. He has the big eyebrow ridge, which, yes, is unattached, except mostly through there, because this is, like, just one big patch. So if you're ever wondering if this thing could probably come all the way down, maybe, but that would be something I would never be willing to do. So you have that. The ears are actually hiding back here because these are um, pretty simple ears. It's just a couple of pieces with the pale part in the middle. And the same thing goes for the other one. Mine actually doesn't come with a hangstring, I can only assume because the owner just at some point broke the hangstrings on both of these. So that's just an, an unfortunate detail that I have to live with, but that's fine. 
His muzzle is actually in pretty decent shape. The only weird part about it is that mine is only slightly understuffed, so there's a little part of it that juts out and makes the nose go that way a little bit. But otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. And also, his mouth. Oh yes, that smirk. Now, the original prototype design of this guy was actually supposed to have the grin, but that was omitted in the final plush, which I kind of wish they didn't because the grin looks so cool. I mean, I guess it would have looked a little corny with this guy's proportions and stuff, given that he's kind of looks more like he's based on the game model rather than the promo art, which is going to become apparent with uh, the rest of this guy as we take a look at him, but yeah, you know? He is still pretty cool even without it. Now, that's not the only thing to his head, obviously, this being Sonic the Hedgehog. You flip him around, and you got his spikes. Yes, his spine pattern. Now, this thing is a pretty big spine design. And, uh, I don't know if he's a little dirty there, so I need to get that off. Just so I could give you guys the best look at it possible without my inevitable, like, accumulation of dirt. But, yeah. This guy has a cool spike design. The spikes are long, he's got all six of them, and he has one of the better Sonic Spike patterns out there. Now, the one weird thing about his spike design is that these two bottom spines tend to curve more inwards, but I think it still works. It's like, because this would clash with his back spine if it wasn't like that, so I think it still looks good, and it works for the plush design. Now, they are really, really long. Compared to his head, they are massive. But they do look good. I will say that much. For as large and sometimes weird looking as they are, they look really good. And that is just... That definitely... It's good. <laughs> It is a good, it's a great aspect of this plush. Now moving down, you have the chest, which this is one of the main areas that gets me to think it is based off the game model because it is really round, rounder than most of the artwork at the time. And now he was supposed to have a touch tag, but the, oh, the previous owner did end up cutting it off, so I can't show you the touch tag on this guy, although it's pretty much the same as the Eggman touch tag, so there isn't too much different I need to show you. He also doesn't have the paper tag, but I guess that's to be expected. Pretty sure this is American release, so he might not even come with the paper tag, but you know, that just, that is uh, an aspect that I can't really confirm unless I ask the seller, which I might actually do sometime. That might be a smart idea. Obviously you can see how his arms are attached. Flipping him over reveals his back spines, which I believe are patterned better than the top ones just overall. They look really accurate and really good. Now, the one flaw of this Sonic plush, like the big, big flaw, there were a couple flaws here and there because of uh, just general wear and tear, but this is the only really big flaw. This is actually a hole in his back. Now, the plush is very well made and packed together to a point where you probably wouldn't notice that this hole is there. Like, it, like you don't even see it really. You can see the seam where it is, but you don't see the actual hole because it's closed up very well. But I can stick my finger in there and feel the plush inside, so that is the one thing about this uh, guy being used that's a negative. But Overall, it, it's fine. I can live with it. But, yeah. So, flipping him over again, we can just get a good look at his hand design with four fingers because I guess finger proportions weren't strong suit of plush designers back in the day or something. I don't know. That's, the, that's another weird aspect about this plush. But, the pose therein is reminiscent of the SA1 box art. And my favorite thing about it, you can make him scratch his chin. 
I totally didn't turn this to into an emote on Discord. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, you should uh you should find me on Discord at uh, Project Elements hashtag two two nine one. You should. I, I want more people to talk to. Anyway, <laughs> uh, now that we've got my crippling loneliness out the way, moving down to the feet, he's got pretty short legs, and I guess I could say the same thing about the arms. The legs are just pretty short, and it is pretty obvious that they are short, <laughs> which, as I said, just lends more credibility to the theory that this guy is just based off the model from the game rather than the actual promo art, you know? But yeah, there was that, and then you've got these pretty damn big feet cuffs. Now, they do have stitching in them, and same with the ones on the glove to show that they are the cuffs, but these ones are pretty big, even bigger than the ones on the gloves. So... Yeah, they're kind of more like cylinders than the actual feet cuffs. But I think they still look cool. I mean, they sort of sell the look of his boots, I guess. Which, as I said, even more reason why this guy is just such an anomaly of a plush and is something we will never see again, either. So, yeah. His feet are very cool. He has the felt, um felt strap going through his feet are very well patterned and even as the buckle on the other side also made of felt thank god this one hasn't started deteriorating and the same goes for the other side too but now that we've reached the feet it pains me to say but my vinyl is not perfect this is an issue that has plagued basically almost a, a good portion of 90s and early 2000s Sonic plushes. This vinyl material. This vinyl material is the bane of my existence because it deteriorates so much easier than I expected it to. There is damage on both shoes and to some extent you can avoid some of it. You can excuse that. Maybe a little bit of the scuffing on the sides. That's inexcusable. And that just happens. Like, if you're not careful, it will fall apart on you. And that just sucks. That is the worst part about these plushes. And kind of why my favorites are the ones without the material. I mean, and Gamma, but we don't talk about Gamma. But, yeah. Most plushes in the line have some form of this material somewhere on the plush, and it just is a huge shame. The one thing about these guys that I just really, really hate to deal with, because it just, it's so easy, it just, it's just so easy to just, to let this material deteriorate, to accidentally scrape more of it off, that it's just like, it kind of prevents me from really doing much with this guy. He ha kind of has to sit in his display case and just look nice or else he's just gonna deteriorate if I take him out. Oh, I'm pretty sure there was even material on his sock cuffs that was more deteriorated vinyl. So, uh, yeah, this guy, th this guy's been through a lot. But thankfully, the rest of the plush is good enough that I guess I can overlook that for the time being, although it really does suck that that's the material they used. He really could have been one of the best plushes if it wasn't for that one fatal flaw. And that's all I really have to say about the Sonic, he's pretty cool and I got him from the same place as the plush we'll be taking a look at next, and for a price I would rather not say right now. But yeah, one of the first modern Sonic plushes ever released. He's just a really cool one. I've wanted this guy for a long time, and finally getting him was just a magical experience, let me tell you. Oh my god, opening up that box and just seeing this guy's face poking out was just so cool. 
I've wanted this guy for a long time, and finally having him was just amazing. Next up on the chopping block, we have the Tails plush. Yes. This guy, I think, is just a really good modern Tails plush. Like, genuinely, he's just one of my favorite. he's just one of my low-key favorites, just because he captures the cute factor of Tails so well, while just being a good plush. Now, he is one of the more lackluster plushes in the actual plush set, being that, yeah, it is just Tails, and there isn't even that much about him that's, like, unique. I guess his body is still more round, meaning that, yeah, still game, like, game model type design, but there also isn't that much about him that could be different. It's just Tails. And it's just a really good Tails plush. So, yeah. I guess the only place to start is the same place we started with the Sonic, the face. Now, obviously, the same thing applies to this Tails, with his eyes being sort of painted over a little bit, just to keep the white of them looking a little more clean. He has... His eyes are basically just these white parts, and I, this is just an issue I have with Tails plushes in general, but especially because this guy, apparently his muzzle isn't like... There's something about the stitching on my Tails plush that just makes the muzzle sort of, like, jut out more, which looks a little better. It looks better than having it be bumpy like a lot of other of the SA1 Tails plushes. But it creates a weird effect I see on a lot of Tails plushes with the eyes because they're white and the, the muzzle because that's white. It sort of blends together, you know? It just looks weird when you put it into... When you actually... It just looks weird when you, like, just look at it from a distance. It looks like it's part of the same piece. Now, obviously, you can tell it is his eyes. I just think, to some extent, it looks weird. But this is just an issue on most Tails plushies. It's not exclusive to this guy. I don't hold it against this plush because this plush is still really great. So, yeah, this is my little mini rant. But he's got his, um, he's got his uh, tufts of hair, which is just a piece of like a couple pieces of felt glued together, which could split. But thankfully, mine haven't, which is very good. His ears are uh, actually better than the Sonics. They're stuffed. They got the white in the middle. And they look pretty good and are pretty proportionate to him. He also has his cute little mouth. No detail though, which is the only thing I really hold against the mouth. But it's not even that bad. It still... It sells the look. And you got his little plastic nose, which looks really cute. And I like the because it's so cute. So, yeah. There isn't too much else to say. The back of his head isn't that eventful. He has his cheek tufts. It's just a round tail's head, like it should be. Now moving down to his body, this is where things start to get a little interesting. Now, he does have just a sort of standard round body, but he also does have his cheek tufts on him. And certain Tails plushes out there, notably the Sega Toys ones, tend to actually do the cheek tufts just stitched on, or... I mean, not the cheek tufts, the body tufts either stitched on or by some other method that keeps them level to the plush, or it's small enough that the felt effect isn't really that important because it doesn't get it doesn't get moved or like bent out of shape too often. But this guy just straight up is big and uses felt on this, which, as you can see, has led to a little bit of deterioration. It's not that bad. This guy has been kept in decent shape. Most of the white deterioration is just universal across the entire plush, but the, the chest tufts are definitely notable for probably being the most easy area to actually damage on this guy because it's just two pieces of cut felt. That's pretty much it. That and the bangs. 
And uh, same story with the Sonic, because I got these from the same seller. Uh, touch tag is cut off, and no paper tag, obviously. Now, something about this Tails that I can't even really say is, like, better than the Sonic, because the Sonic also had different details for the shoe and the gloves. But this Tails just has more arm space to work with. Like, his arms feel longer because there they isn't as much space taken up by the, the cuffs. And his legs are also longer for the same reason. But otherwise, he is pretty, he is like pretty good scale with the Sonic. Like, he's not a bad scale, he just looks just a tad bit different as tad, a little bit of different proportions on him. Which I think do suit him. I think they look really good, and everything is sort of, like, very proportionate on this guy. He looks like a pretty, just a pretty good Tails plush. However, flipping him to the back reveals the best part of him, that being his big tails, yes, his big, fluffy tails, and I, don't, I can't tell if this is just a universal thing. It might just be a universal thing with most of these, uh... With most of these SA1 Tails plushes, but might have a little bit of lacking stuffing in here. But that might just be a universal thing, I'm not sure. That's the only thing I hold against them, but these are some pretty floofy tails. Like, they're they're pretty good. They got all the details they need, including the tips and the floofiness around here. It, there is a line going down it, which doesn't really look too good, but other Tails plushes also have the problem, so it's not exclusive to this, but it still is, a, it still is, like, inaccurate, but I don't think of it too much, it still looks pretty, uh, the tails still look really good, and are pretty big, like, look at this in my hand, <laughs> it is pretty big, you know, they're big, floofy tails, <laughs> hence the name, Tails. Now, I'm actually going to move on to the hands, because the hands are actually pretty interesting. Now, as I said, the cuffs feel a little shorter, and I'm just gonna, I think the hands are smaller. But, he's got the band going around his gloves. And not many Tails plushes actually bother with the glove details, and the, the, uh, the buckle details. Which confuses me, because some of, because a lot of Tails plushes tend to release around these time, like, there were quite a lot of Tails plushes released in between this and the Tails plushes we have today, and very few of them have ever done those details, which I've always found surprising given that so much SA1 merchandise has come out, but yeah, no, they're just absent. They're just absent on most Tails plushes, which is the reason why I actually really appreciate them being here. They're really good details, and same with the buckles here. Now. These buckles are, um, these are some pretty good buckle details. It is a, basically a glued piece of felt onto another piece of felt that's wrapped around. And much like how Pat Mac pointed out, they did have to cut the buckle to stitch it on. I'm pretty sure the same holds true for this one. Yeah, for the hands and for the feet buckles. But honestly, you're not really going to see the buckles from the backside that much, so I think it works. His feet are also just a very simple pattern, and it works. And it just looks pretty good. Like, this is just a really good Tails plush. The patterns on this guy are just really good. There, are, there isn't much to say about him, but that also means there aren't very many flaws with the plush either. He's just a good Tails plush. And I can appreciate that. Now once again, elephants in the room. The vinyl material. I hate this material so, so, so much. But my deterioration on the tails isn't as bad as the Sonic. I'll say that much. His, uh, his vinyl has held up a little bit more. I think it's just because there's less of it because his feet are smaller than the Sonic's. But... Yeah, it's still disappointing that this guy uses the vinyl material, but oh well. I was just common at the time, blah blah blah. There's not really much you can do to change it, that's just 
the way it is. And because of that, that's just always gonna be how this Tails plush is. But hey, outside of that, it's a really good modern Tails plush. And honestly, I would be fine if I didn't get any other modern Tails plushes besides this one, because this guy is pretty great. So, overall, I really, really enjoy these two. Like, I genuinely think these are just some of the best plushes of these characters that we've just ever had. Like, we've had good Tails plushes, we've had good Sonic plushes, there are a better version of these two. But these are still really, really great. Like, I honestly think these are some of the best plushes of these characters that have ever been made. And I am super happy to own them because I've wanted these guys for a long time. I think at this point, basically ever since Pat Mac first released his video like six years ago or something. I don't know. I'll probably put a link to it in the description and uh, <laughs> maybe put it on screen right now. You know, a little ma editing magic, do a little of this and like it'll be on screen how many years it's been since that video came out and how many years of me wanting them. But yeah, I finally have them and they're just really really great like they are great plushes and i'm just super happy that i do own them and yes i did get these guys before him but even so i just love having these guys displayed alongside sa1 eggman because they're such great plushes and these are probably plushes we will never see again these came from a very different era, and I'm just very glad to have actually managed to track these guys down. Even if the price I paid might have been uh, a little exorbitant for the both of them, but, you know, we, we don't have to get into the details. I... I missed my chance to get them for a better price. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm just very, very glad to own them. These are some of my favorite plushes of these characters. Definitely some of my favorite plushes in my collection. Although, the real favorite I should bring in right now. Y'all knew I wasn't going to do an SA1 Sonic and Tails review without bringing in the big boy. <laughs> yes, SA1 Eggman. These three proudly share the shelf along with, um, along with, uh, Little Tiny over here as the top shelf of incredibly cool rare Sonic plushes in my collection. And I'm just very glad I own all of them, bro. I got the Sonic first, then the Tails, then the Eggman, and it was just magical the entire way through, bro. It was just so magical to get all of these guys, each and every single one of them, like plush after plush after plush. It's just, it was something that I never expected to ever happen, but it's something I'm very grateful for. And honestly, I'm also grateful for all of you guys. These guys have provided this channel with content that has allowed me to grow an audience and get to interact with all you guys and just meet so many great people that I hope to be friends with for a long time. And for that, I thank you. I thank these plushes, I thank Sega and Sonic Adventure 1, and I just am very grateful for everything that I have and have been able to obtain. It, it means the world to me. More than you could ever imagine. But, yeah. With that said, that's pretty much it. This has been Jaden, also known as Project Elements, signing off. See you later, everybody! Hey.